Hello, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. As another part of the uh, early tutorial kind of mini series I'm doing, I've decided I'm going to break down some additional components aside from the fleet manager. I went over the fleet manager in the previous video, and I'm going to work through kind of most of the uh, little systems over here on the left. So, starting with government and working my way down. Might combine some of them depending on how small they are, but for now, I'm going to be looking at government. Remember, this is more so for new players or beginning players, people with little to no experience with Stellaris, uh, somebody who might want to understand kind of the basics of how each of these systems work and what it can be used for. Uh, whenever I start a game, I always recommend people go and click on their government because it will help th re remind them what they're using, what they should kind of be working towards, and what benefits they're receiving from their leader as well as their uh, government. So, how we do that is we click up here on the flag and it will pop up this. We will see first the name of our empire, our leader, his age, or her age, and skill level. So skill level's here, leader's name is there, and their species name is there. You'll also notice the leader has ruler traits, so we have investor and industrialist, and any leader who's uh, either oligarchic, dictatorial, or imperial will have an agenda. And their agenda will be over here in the modifiers. So if we hover over the agenda, it'll show us what that does. Also, we have the governing ethics that we chose at the beginning. You can always go back to see what you chose. Authoritarian, xenophile, and materialist. As well as our civics. We have diplomatic corps and police state. Down here, it will show us our authority, imperial. As well as our origin, down here, prosperous unification. And some other minor things we don't need to know exactly right now, but our diplomatic weight and the ability to reform our government. We won't get into reformations just yet, because it's not something that you can do even for the first 20 years. We must wait at least 20 years. So it's not really something you are going to be doing at the beginning of the game, and it's not something you can do really at the beginning of the game. But going back to the ruler traits and the agenda, it is important to look at these and kind of see what we've got. So we're working with some extra trade value, which it, within the policy screen, in a different video, I will go over what trade value is used for, but in short, it will just increase our economy, give us extra energy to work with, which is kind of like cash. And also, industrialist, which gives us extra monthly minerals. Quite nice. Uh, minerals are used to build buildings and districts. Quite useful. And then we also have our agenda. Each leader has ruler traits and an agenda. The agenda here gives us extra energy credits from jobs. So if we hover over our energy credits right now at 115, you can see we're producing 63 from jobs, 15 from stations, 57 from trade, and 20 base. So it's that 10% is affecting the 63 there, increasing it. And the trade, you'll see the trade value. We're getting 57 from trade, so that 10% is affecting there. So we have two major benefits to our energy economy and one to our monthly minerals. Also, you'll notice down here, there are two other screens, or tabs, I, I should say, demographics and advisor. Demographics is pretty useful. It'll tell us within our empire what population is making up our empire. So we have only currently our starting species, the Tial. Rapid breeders, charismatic, strong, sedentary, and unruly. It'll also tell us our preference and how many pops we have of them across how many worlds. So 32 within one world. Also down here, we have pop effects. These are pop effects within your entire empire. So it'll, ch it'll show us if we're getting any kind of happiness benefit across our empire, biological pop speed, pop growth speed overall, lithoid pop growth speed, and governing ethics attraction. Unless, you have some kind of agenda or ruler trait 
that affects happiness or pop growth speed, these will always be at zero at the start of the game. And lastly, advisor. When you click on the advisor, it will give you kind of a preview of what they sound like. So for example, if we click on uh, Xenophobe. Under no circumstances must the Xeno be trusted. It will lie, it will cheat, and it will do anything in its power to undermine the efforts of those who in truth are its superiors. Gives us a nice little blurb of what he sounds like. Very happy guy. But here you can just kind of adjust your advisor accordingly, depending on how many expansion packs you have. Of course, you always have the default advisor, original. Or you could just press based on government. It will change it to be based upon your governing ethics. Uh, usually randomized or the one that will have the most um, approval. So at, for us, it was authoritarian. But that is kind of just a basic overview of what information you receive from the government screen and how it can be used in the early game to kind of give you an idea of what kind of benefits you're receiving and maybe a better idea of you know what you should kind of go towards if we're growing our economy and we have trade value you know maybe we don't need to worry as much about energy credits because we have effectively a 20 percent bonus to them Maybe we'd want to focus more on some consumer goods or alloys. Whereas vice versa, if we had something that was improving minerals and minerals here, maybe with only one effect of improving our energy credits, we would want to focus on that. But last but not least, forgot to mention there's also the relations tab. Currently don't have anything here because it's the start of the game. This will fill up with your relations as you progress through, but not something too important. More so, you'll want to review the modifiers and your ruler traits. Thank you, and have a blessed day.